Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to episode 98 of the Guardian Hub podcast, where we talk destiny and our love of the game. We bring on different guests and communities to learn about them, their experiences in destiny, and discuss other topics. Your hosts, as always, are Des Raven, Sin, and Kingsley Mac. I read it Ooh. right to left. <laughs> Did you just there? say you're playing on Reddit? Playing That's what I got out Reddit. of it. Uh, I don't know. Moving <laughs> on. How are you doing, <laughs> I think, Tess? <laughs> I think Sen needs to turn up his hearing aid. Uh, basically, I am getting old. <laughs> <laughs> and with work kicking my rear end, it feels like I'm getting older by the day. Right. I mean, that's the story every week, Sin. Anything new to report there, or they're still kicking your butt? They're still kicking my butt. Not making enough money, working too many hours. Uh, one day. Aren't we all? I am, I am keeping my eye out, though. So maybe if I can have a career change sometime soon, I might be uh, more engaged and less tired. I mean, if you if you need any tips with IT stuff, I can I can I don't know what I was going to go with that. Would you but... say tips, tricks, and guides? Yeah, sure. Uh, don't do it. <laughs> You'll have people <laughs> mad at you when their computers don't work, just like you have people mad at you now when. They don't have the deal that they want with their car. <laughs> well, they'll get over it with that part. Yeah. What the car still buy anyway. Bank. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, hey, so the bank will give me this deal. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to lie. I do that with bad credit people. Be like, well, this is all the bank will approve. Sorry. I mean, their options are limited, <laughs> so you do what they got to do, right? right? Yeah, and they actually end up, even bad credit customers end up getting a pretty good deal because you have to meet the bank requirements. And it ends up being so bloody awful for the dealership. You just make it just to have a deal in the books. That's fair. That makes sense. I think a lot of times people just want to be done, right? They're like, I got a deal. Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> like, listen, man, I don't want to be here. You don't want me here. Can we just Can we just make this happen so I can go? Yeah, you and the captain can make it happen. But anyways, I we have this voice. We yeah, should we probably have a introduce guest this uh, evening. our mm-hmm. guest, Kingsley Mech. Uh, you want me to introduce him? <laughs> Go for it. Uh, I I'll think you should either start no. with singer songwriter, singer songwriter, um, and uh, writer on DestinyNewsNet.hub. Sorry, Destiny. What? Hub. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> so, so you have a contest Uh-oh. with Uh-oh. a desktop on the net. So with a different hub. That, that <laughs> Did you just okay. say destinynewsnet.hub? Okay, here's here's the thing. I, I know it's destinynewshub.net, but here's the thing. If I don't know if you've listened to some of our previous episodes, but people who have, we always joke about we're the best hub on the net, and we were saying maybe we should have like a .hub domain and kind of get everyone to combine together. <laughs> so that's kind of... I don't know, kind of where my mind was going. But no, I'm very sorry. Destiny News Hub dot. Des- Jeez. <laughs> Destiny News Net dot com. With that right? being said, you should probably just say who the guest is. <laughs> yes. And our guest this evening is Scott Free, and he's one of the writers there. Glad to have you here. Sorry for the shenanigans we're having. I mean, I appreciate that intro. It was kind of like building pressure and building some kind of um, it's like my life it's like yeah it's building the like my hype is just skyrocketing from the top i appreciate hey, that there there is hype and you know what so, so you can just be chill and not worry about uh any pressure being on you because uh you know the pressure is on me for being a plub saying that weird <laughs> yeah, we're the the maestro. Maestro. yeah i blame it on kingsley he's supposed to be the maestro here the maestro. conductor maestro <laughs> Or I can just call you Felicia for messing up. Yeah, no, that works. No, so, but seriously, yeah, yes. we want to get to know about you. We want to, I mean, the reason how I got to know about Destiny News Hub was I like having articles post in our Discord to, for people to keep informed. I mean, a geek out with like, oh, this is what's going on in the game. And um, I've known about the site for a while. And, uh, you guys had an easy site with a lot of articles and just something that I could crawl with a bot that I made using a if this then that service. 
And then uh, from there, just kind of the editor and some of the people started contacting me and saying, hey, let's team up. We can be a podcast. We team up with you guys. And and then I have your guys' articles post on our on our Discord. But it's a pretty cool thing. I, I guess just I want to definitely get to know more about you. But since we're on the topic, how did you get to writing with them? Get to- so, so the way I found them was I – I used to work in like retail and food. Like I was a Starbucks store manager the whole nine. And then one day I woke up and said, I want to work in gaming and I've always liked to write. So I just started writing anywhere. I started my own blog for a while and I shut it down recently, but I've always been enamored with the destiny. I've been obsessed with the game since it came out and I was just looking to write literally anywhere. So I looked up all the destiny sites that I could and then one day I was like, I think I was on Reddit and someone had like put a list of all these different sites and Destiny News Hub came up and I was like, oh, I've never heard of that one. Let me just go take a look. And I started looking through their articles and I started reading the guys and reading things. And I was like, oh, this site is legit. I should definitely try to write for them. So I contacted who I needed to contact and sent over my resume of things that I had written in the past, including some Destiny guides and raid guides and things of that nature. And now I'm here. Oh, that's awesome. <clears throat> so you just kind of hit them up and yeah, that's the way to do it, right? Just say you need someone to write and just go for it. I, I've heard that from other people too. Yeah, like a lot of people get stuck with the whole, maybe I'm not ready, maybe I'm not qualified, but it's really not up to you to decide if you're qualified or not. You really just need to send out the applications and communicate with people and leave it up to them. After you've sold yourself and sent over your info, it's really not up to you. So just... It's like they say in like basketball, right? Every shot you don't take is a shot you miss. Exactly. You know, just go Can't for confirm. it. That, that's how I uh, <laughs> met, met my wife. I I was very, uh, I just went for it. And usually I'm a pretty shy person, but I just asked her out and showed interest. And that's what, uh, you know, you know, I it, earlier in my life, I guess, yeah, right, I would have just... what you're saying. <laughs> the people that just say, oh, should I ask someone out or should I, you know, like you said here, like if someone's like, oh, should I turn in, you know, should I send them something? Will they, you know, turn it down? But it doesn't matter. Just go for it. Definitely a good lesson there. Eh, just do it. The worst thing I can say is no. Exactly. In think- most situations. Unless you're breaking a law, and the worst that can happen is you get sent to jail. But you know, <laughs> truth. How many times did I have to ask you, Cindy, to join me on the podcast before you said yes? Uh, once. <laughs> See, I thought you were going to say more. I felt like at first you were like, uh, "Let me think about it." But no. <laughs> maybe I'm remembering that wrong. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he probably thought about asking you a whole bunch of times and never did, and then finally just pulled the trigger. Exactly. <laughs> Either that or Sin was playing coy. Either way. <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you have an article that came out during Beyond Light called Destiny 2 Charged with Light Guide, and very informative um, looking through this. And what kind of... Uh, what came to your mind why you came up with that article? So I've always been one of those people that's really been in the RPGs. I've played everything from Pokemon to Mass Effect to uh, the Final Fantasy games, Chrono Cross, oh, Chrono yeah. Trigger, Island, anything like that, I'll play it. And what I liked about I like Destiny this and... <laughs> right. Seeds. <laughs> culture. And one thing I liked about this game is that when they took away a lot of our power from our weapons and they nerfed it, a lot of people were upset, but then they gave us this weird charge with light mechanic and they didn't explain it, which is typical Bungie, so I wasn't upset about it. And when I looked at it, I realized that all the power that they took from our weapons, they just put on our armor with these different builds and how you can not need to have Rampage Kill Clip or you know, feeding frenzy multi kill clip on your weapons because you can just have like an ever existing damage buff with like high energy fire, or you can utilize war mind cells to make everything in the map explode if you're in PVE. And the more I started looking into it, the more I started talking to people because I'm also a moderator on a Destiny Two Facebook group. I started seeing more and more questions, and people just don't understand and just weren't familiar with what Charge with Light does for you, even for PvP. So one day on a whim, I just wrote 1,100 words on what it is and how to use it. And I try to make it as simple 
to understand. I tried to break down different types of mods that you can use, what they, their costs, their benefits. And I even used, as an example, Ace of Spades. Because just like you mentioned before with If This Then That, that's all Charge with Light is. If you do this, yeah. then this happens, and that's it. And I used the uh, exotic perk on Ace of Spades in order to get that to be understood. Because we have Firefly, right? So mm-hmm. with Ace of Spades, when you get a precision kill, you get that fast reload. You get Outlaw with Firefly. But you also get Memento Mori rounds. And I was explaining that you get one kill with Ace of Spades, and you reload the proc Memento Mori. But once you have Memento Mori, you gain bonus damage bullets. And then if you get precision hits with the weapon, you get Firefly. But Firefly inf- increases the reload speed and causes the target to explode. So it's all these little things that you're doing off of just getting a kill with the gun or getting a precision kill with the gun. And Charge with Light is just that simple. If you want to become Charged with Light, there's mods that let you just run over orbs and be charged. And if you want to do something with that charge, like higher energy fire, you have bonus damage until you kill something. And I just tried to make it as simple to understand. I tried to explain every little thing. But getting into the nitty gritty of gaming is what drives me. I like explaining things. I like teaching things. Oh, I really, that is really awesome. And you do do an excellent job in this article. And yeah. I, I meant to just kind of scour over this more, but I always meant to like fully spec into this charge with light build. But for one, whatever reason for me personally, I never. Super until things come up like, oh, the raid, Atrax, we want to have Lucent Blade, Charge with Light. How do we do that again? Yeah, yeah, put on these mods, uh, run over the orbs. Okay, thanks for the quick, you know, reminder. <laughs> but yeah. it would just be good if we could remember. Well, me personally, I'm sure a lot of y'all remember this, but just kind of keep this in mind because I'm sure I'm missing out on a lot. Um, I, can get, I can give two tips right now. There's two mods I think everyone should have on every armor set. So you don't have to have elements matching all the way through from head to toe, but you should have at least two you should have two arc pieces on your armor. And the reason for that is when you want to have powerful friends, which is another one of those charge with light mods. Because regardless of the charge with light mechanic, it says if you have another arc mod slotted, you get plus twenty mobility. And Radiant Light is another one of those mods, but again, regardless of charge with light, because you don't need it. It's you get another arc. Um, you get plus twenty strength if you also have an arc mod uh, slotted into your armor. And powerful friends and radiant light set um, offset each other, so they each count as an arc mod and satisfy the mod. So you can get plus twenty mobility and plus twenty strength just by socketing two mods in your armor. This is awesome, and of course I'm like taking notes. While, but everyone <laughs> listening to the podcast, <laughs> make note of that. Follow these instructions. <laughs> like I said, I like this guy. <laughs> uh, those are two mods I definitely try and wiggle in for things but um, I can definitely tell like I said you have some experience explaining yourself should I say um, just from the simple fact that you even break down like the color of like the things within the charge of light mods and what they do or what they represent rather like your whole green mod, yellow mod, white mod uh, explanations. Like even breaking that down is just it's like a super helpful thing for people to I'm glad uh, it was. notice. Yeah, I was so nervous when I wrote this. I was like, I hope this isn't like too wordy, <laughs> and I hope I hope I don't lose people, and I hope it's like something that they can understand simply and be able to walk away from this and be like, all right, I can kind of look at these bots and figure out what I want from now on. And exactly. Now, I, I kind of like Wordy, so I don't know if that's good or bad uh, <laughs> from a perspective, but like I said, I can appreciate like, uh, the attention to detail to get people to understand things. Much appreciated. Yeah, so um, anything, uh, this is an excellent article, anything uh, you can mention that you're working on coming forward? In the future? Uh, yeah, so before the season started, I was like everyone else that tries to make content for Destiny, and I was just looking for anything I could to get ahead. And the second the API came out at the beginning, at the beginning of the season, I started formatting a, a review I'm going to do of all of the brand new weapons. So, none of the reprisals, so I'm not talking about uh, Shadow Price, 
I'm not talking about like Palindrome or the Swarm, any of those reprisals. Messenger, unfortunately, is not going to be there because that's a reprisal as well. But things like the third Axiom, uh, things like the bottom dollar, which doesn't exist. I don't care if anyone says they have one, they don't. They're <laughs> lying. Um, and I just want to go over each of those weapons. I want to talk about the flavor text, how to get them, rate of fire, impact, uh, if there's a curated role, what it might be, recommendations for PvE, PvP, and then if I have enough space to write it, uh, synergies with subclasses, synergy with the exotic armor and kind of builds, and then just like my general opinion of the weapon and what I think it brings to the game. Because some weapons have standout perks, like Frenzy on an SMG, which is really nuts. And I'm still diving into the uh, the specific damage boost that it does, but I, that's the kind of thing I want to bring to light. Let people know that these weapons that are brand new are actually doing something to the matter. They're not just fluff. I uh, can't wait. That's awesome. And yeah, and like you mentioned, a lot of us have kind of you know heard and known like SMG frenzy and stuff like that. But I I can't wait to hear a more of a dive of uh, what's you know why we want these weapons and good roles to get and how it all synergizes. So looking forward to that for sure. Then I would like to object because I do have a bottom dollar. Yeah, I've got oh. one too. Oh, so you guys know you guys know Bungie does, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we do have a podcast, so you know, it's that content creator uh, privilege. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what's that other mod called that you pair with friends of family friends mod? <laughs> friends and power. Oh, yeah, friends. It's, it's called uh, the other one is called Radiant Light. Yes. Okay. Which is also Arc. Yes. Right. So, what powerful so they, friends uh, says is um, when you become charged with light, nearby allies can also become charged with light if they're not already. But that's irrelevant. So, like, the plus 20 you get anyway. You don't even need any of that uh, Charger Light stuff to be working. And then for Radiant Light, just in case you guys want to know, um, casting your super causes your nearby allies to become Charger Light. So both of them play off each other pretty well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm looking through them now, and I'll be uh, making a build soon. Also, uh, any Warlocks? Any Warlock mains in here? Or That's me, Kingsley. Kingsley. Okay, because there's a Warlock helmet that I think a lot of Warlocks look at and think it's trash or just not worth it, but I think they sleep on it for no reason, and it's uh, Eye of Another World. Hmm. So, Eye of Another World, it says that it just gives you increased ability regen, and it highlights uh, targets, but what it actually gives you is plus 30 recovery, plus 30 oh. uh, um, discipline, and plus 30 strength. Jesus. So you could have triple 100s just by having things in the 70s. And if you push any of those cooldowns past the 100, you still get increased cooldown. So you can have, like, technically 130 recovery, and your rift will come back even faster than it was at 100. Hmm. The helmet's broken. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily we're not super, super big podcast, so hopefully uh, a bunch yeah, of I know. Fearless, but <laughs> Don't they ever touch it, I'll cry. <laughs> <laughs> but I we appreciate just... the suggestion. Yeah, of course. Next, next twelve. We suddenly got a tip that this is working <laughs> a little too well. <laughs> working as intended. So read patch notes. We have removed eye of another world. <laughs> We're listening, Guardian Hub. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man, <clears throat> it's possible. I've seen. Uh, DMG respond to some people that aren't super big. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool, but uh, who knows? But uh, <laughs> all right, I, this is awesome just having like all these notes as I go along and having you on the podcast. Boy, uh, if you ever have uh, any tips, just feel free and uh, write them in our Discord too. We, yeah, any, we any broken builds, them up let us know. Anyone else. <laughs> sure, I will. I mean, uh, I'll do the best I can to like remind you guys of something that's helpful. <laughs> You're our new best friend. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else have you done in the Destiny community? Uh, I heard you, you've been on podcasts before. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good friends with Bushman Bob of the Destiny Addicts podcast. And I've oh, been God, on, I think, I've been on there, I think, four or five times now. I was just on there recently, I think a few months ago. Um, we were talking about 
the extended season, what it was like before Beyond Light dropped, and it was just, you know, just a little bit of catching up because I haven't seen them in a long time. That's awesome. I, I feel bad. Um, I love those guys. I, I met Bushman Bob way back in D1. I used to run some strikes with him even before he started his podcast, and I feel so bad. Yep. I've been so behind on that one. So um, that one is definitely getting bumped up now, sir, since uh, you, you know, you've let us know you've been on recently. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and, uh, and shout out to Bushman and Gibbo. What's going on, guys? Now, For do sure. you have a new favorite C word after all that? Uh, it was always my favorite C word, but I use it with more <laughs> with reckless abandon now. <laughs> I know. Uh, I know. Gibbo does. Oh man, I mean, he's, he's, he used to be on there, right? That he says that all the way from Japan. I'm just like, man. Come on, <laughs> we're here in the states. They might hear you. <laughs> well, Gibbo, I will eventually see you next Tuesday. Oh yeah, man, don't get him started. He might hurt you. He's ready to go. <laughs> I don't think he listens to much other stuff. Honestly, <laughs> you're probably right. Uh, but probably right. but he's officially also, called out now. I've also done um, some commentary for Destiny Two Esports. Back oh, like, like they used to do like different tournaments and have a little PvP, and I've done some commentary. And I did a I did a trailer. I did the audio for one of their tournaments one time. They had like a a big prize pool tournament that they were running, and then they needed someone to do the. Uh, the trailer for it so i was like yeah i mean you guys can i'll go talk over some stuff 4a studios is the one that did it so if you check out 4a studios on twitter you can check out the trailer it was like from a year or two ago but it was cool it was fun nice and then i've also done yeah. some uh beyond light guides for games radar i've written some stuff for them uh just like aspect of darkness quests i did a few other things for them uh, that was interesting too, because they reached out to me the first time I wrote for them. But that was what I what that's what cemented to me that I could actually write is that when they asked me to do some stuff for them. So um, I wrote like I'm writing a Deepstone Crypt guide for them because they have one up, but I told them I would write another one just to have a different set because like I wrote I wanted to write it after the uh, the challenges came out. But yeah, I've I've tried to be as be all across the Destiny community as much as possible. That's pretty cool. Uh, ever gone into any like streaming or anything like that? Uh, I'm a f- I'm an affiliate on Twitch, but I haven't streamed since COVID started. Uh, just because where I live in New Jersey, it's high bandwidth area, and it's just not conducive for streaming right now. But I yeah. am working on a YouTube channel, uh, lore based, not. Like Bife and not like Mylan Games, it's going to be more like a like a documentary series where I go over. Okay, so those of you who remember Mass Effect, there was a codex, and you got to learn basically everything about the entire world of Mass Effect, from planets to races to weaponry to all of that. And I want to do something like that for Destiny. So talking about like the the military hierarchy that's in the Cabal, talking about the same thing that's in the the Elixir or the Fallen. Going over the the different races, the different uh, factions in the tower, and just doing small little maybe five minute documentary videos on each little topic, and going from there. Right. So, I don't know when the first video is going to come out. I've written a bunch of scripts, and I've done that thing where you write and then you just don't do anything with it. But eventually, before next season, something will come out. Mm. It does sound interesting. Like I picture it now, like you sitting at a chair talking about it, and then you you like flash over to to like these little snippets of I don't know Cabal and Elixni and I don't know. I maybe I have a weird way of it's playing out in my head. No, it's what you're saying is kind of what my issue is. So the reason why I've been fighting with what what I'm going to do it is because I kind of have an idea of the kind of shots I want to do for the intro for each episode that I've written so far, and I have to figure out a way to just get an easy camera mode in this game, and then I'm just going to start recording and do it. But yeah, that's that's kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to talk about... I wanted to start with like a, a strong intro about something like a little tidbit or something explaining what I'm going to be talking about in the video, and then kind of cut to it while I'm talking and do little panning shots, even using like Crucible maps, because a lot of them have lore behind them too, like Twilight Gap and all the rest. Bannerfall, even. So, 
If you guys have ideas, please shoot them my way, and I'll try to work them into the videos and chat you out in the end and all that stuff. Oh, you heard that, Sin. Des, Des is our resident lore guy, though. Yep. Oh, yeah, sweet. I yeah, say, I work with him. Yeah, I was just about to say, Kingsley, I didn't know you invited me as a guest. <laughs> it's like everything you're into it's like yeah yeah did that or, um, except for writing you're I, uh, yeah that's I don't know I don't know but yeah I mean your interests uh, align with mine very well so the kindred spirit what you're saying man of, is man of culture his, his interests right. your interest indeed Hey, the DMs are open. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Slide yeah, and, on hilarious, <laughs> and hilariously, these little, like, little known facts uh, are things that I tend to cling to, such as <laughs> hilariously, it came up just before this season started, but mentioning, yeah, female cabal have tusks. And everyone's yep. like, how do we know? And it's like, well, the two that we know of in the lore have tusks. And then all of a sudden, Cadle's like, the, I'm actually also uh, as, on a side note. I'm super stoked I got the pronunciation right before the season. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was sure for the title of Cato, and I was so I was right. so nervous. I was like, I don't want to say it, <laughs> jinx myself. But um, but yeah, and like I said, that came up, and season comes out, and surprise tusks. Well, you'd be surprised how much of the lore impacts like actual gameplay. Like people don't realize that. The Taken Wizards are the one that created the Shadow Thrall. So they said they're slaughtering these Thrall endlessly. Like, just go kill the wizard. She literally spawns them. And Indeed. even if you're fighting like the Hive in a Strike or something, watch the way the watch the way the uh, the AI is programmed. If you kill the wizards first, or you kill the knights and the wizards, the rest of them don't really do much. They kind of they aren't as aggressive. The only thing that'll still be kind of tunnel visioned at you is an ogre. No, yeah, That's it's about it. Rage. Yeah, um, but the wizards and the knights are the ones that control the battlefields. So you literally kill them first, and everything else is garbage. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. Hawkman mission, you have to do that, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, good lord. And speaking of reprised weapons, is one reason I want Shadow Price again. People always ask me, it's like, what's the big deal about it? Some people misremember. Oh, it was an amazing gun. No, it was about garbage, even in D1. The most th interesting thing about Shadow Price is the fact that it was Tolden's first gun, or maybe not first, but his first like known wild or noteworthy gun. Mm -hmm. And that's the only reason I want one. I don't care if it's a crappy roll. I'm probably not going to use it either way. <laughs> I mean, it even says it in the flavor text. It says the precision auto rifle left behind by Tolden the shattered. It also asks so little, and it offers so much. Mm hmm. Of course, back in the that wasn't as major of a thing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They've had barely knew who right. Tolan was. <laughs> right, well, yeah, but now we can't get him to shut up. We're just like, do I want to go to the moon? Because he's going to come like follow me around and bother me. Like, just can you leave me alone? Right. Okay, I'm just I'm going to go to the Dreaming City. Oh, he's here too. Okay, Tolan. <laughs> are you are you dead or what, man? Leave me alone. <laughs> mm. I mean, speaking I think, of, yeah, speaking of, go ahead, Sin. I was going to say, I don't even have a Shadow Price yet, but I am working on getting it. Not as we speak, I'm just doing regular strikes. Live um, updates. If, if you don't get it to, before reset, you might have to wait, because I think they're on a weekly reset. They are. Yeah, that's yeah. what we seem to hear. I, I did just get one myself today with Overflow and Thresh, and uh, it's good enough. I was running it out and about, and uh, um, at least just something for me to try, since it's harder to get of a weapon right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was happy to get one this week, just so I can kind of... Say you got it? Say I got I don't know why. I mean, it's not like I would be that upset if I didn't or whatever, but... Are you sure? It's because you're a Destiny player, and we have these like little mental checkboxes. We just be like, I need to make sure I get one of, like, insert weapon here. And it's like, cool, I have it now. I don't have to even think about what if I don't get it, because now I have one. Sweet. Yeah, and speaking of that exact topic, and I definitely have a lot of questions for you, but I also, anyone who knows me, I hate Crucible PvP, and I've hopped in Trials more this weekend than ever before, and I have four <laughs> copies of Messenger now. That's because he jumped off the map a lot. Don't let him fool you. Well, just the third time for that last one. I, I did 
two full runs. I got to one through turning in tokens, and then, yeah, that fourth one I got with you guys, and uh, we jumped off the map a few times, but uh, just on my third character because I was short on time. Yeah. But uh, it's it's fun to have these weapons that are somewhat appealing, at least, to very appealing, and have ways that the whole community seems to be getting excited again to be running for these, no matter if they're in the raid, they're in trials, they're in the nightfall, they're random rare drop and gambit. You know what I mean? Like just these things that we're just grinding for again. <laughs> we're farming gambit. Like what year is it that we're farming gambit? <laughs> I'm going for the Gilded title. Not going to lie. I am too, just because, like, why not? I'm already sitting in the playlist looking for uh, bottom dollars. I might as well just, like, do all the stuff they're asking me to do. Exactly. I hate you, Bungie. <laughs> isn't, it, uh, isn't it extra infamy next week anyway? Yeah, it's like, yeah. what are you doing? You're trying to make... Uh, of course I'm going to play Gambit next week now. It's, like, yeah. sold. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, Destiny, uh, what got you into the game? When did you start playing? Um, I, I'm a pre-alpha player, but I didn't play as much, so I wasn't really enamored with everything. I, like, I, I've always played Halo games, but when I heard about the pre-alpha, I, I played on my roommate's uh, PlayStation and just like kind of watched and stuff, and I was like, oh, that's Destiny, that's kind of cool. Um, and then I got a PlayStation for my birthday like the same year the game came out, because I was upgrading anyway. And I hit the ground running. So shortly after launch to like now, I've just been hardcore about this game. What about the rest of you? When did you all start? Des? Beta. <sighs> D1 beta. Mm. We all know I was a Taken Tot right about then. Me too. I started um, <clears throat> shortly after the Christmas, after Taken King, probably technically in January. I just okay. uh, kind of knew about the game, but didn't think I'd be interested in it. And funny enough, um, I got it as a gift. And then I, once I did start playing, I was like, oh, I'm interested in this. <laughs> You're like, oh, but, man, goodbye my free time. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> With free time. I kind of wish, you know, when I hear stories about you and Des and other people, like, I wish I was a day one player. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, no, you don't. The, you the, thing, the quality of life or whatever. But here's the <laughs> thing. I I don't know. I still would have, knowing how much I'm into Destiny, I still kind of wish I was there. I think I if know. you were playing for that long, you would have ended up in one of two camps. You would have ended up in a camp where you're kind of all right with whatever Bungie does because the things you love about the game they can't actually ruin unless they just stop telling fun stories. Or you're with and like you only play the things that you enjoy, right? And then when you're not having fun, you just stop for a little bit. Or you'd end up like those other uh, veterans. And there's nothing wrong with these people either. It's just how humans are. But they're like jaded curmudgeons, and they hate everything <laughs> that. Bungie does, and it's because they feel personally attacked by whatever decisions that they make. Which, again, it's not their fault, you know? The game goes in a direction you don't like, it's fine. But, I think, like, that's why people tell you don't want to have been around that long. Because, yeah, quality of life changes, but there's also, like, that little bit of resentment that some of us have that I don't, I don't think you want because it would make you super toxic if you had that personality. <laughs> oh, I get it. And I've seen that a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I would. Personally, my prime reason for saying that always draws back to the engrams and how they originally oh, worked. And then finding out the math later and the fact that it was actually more likely to get an exotic from a legendary engram than a legendary. <laughs> that was bad. How many and that's exotic basically. Hmm? No, go ahead. Oh, no, no, you go ahead. I, I ramble. <laughs> oh, I do too. That's why I was just going to ask you um, how many <laughs> how many exotic engrams did you have that turned into blues? Oh, no, many. No, that's why uh, one of my one there was one gun that has survived in my vault in D one to this day, and I haven't touched D one since you know D two. But 
it has survived into my D1 vault to this day, its original incarnation, regardless of whether getting a new one or not. Zombie Apocalypse has been in my vault because that's a legendary I got out of a legendary engram. <laughs> it was my first one. So it's like, this is special to me. It was an absolutely garbage roll, too. But it was my first one. It was the first one. And I, I, I had not the heart throughout the years <laughs> to actually dismantle it. So it is still sitting in my D1 vault, the original one. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. That is definitely interesting. Speaking of quality of life things, I mean, when I came into the game, it was shortly before that April update. And I remember after taking King and I remember trying to do infusion and like doing research. I'm like, how does this work? And people were saying like, it's some weird, like you're not going to get the full amount. And I forget if there was some calculation or whatever. And oh the April my God. Comes out and the one-to-one infusion, I'm like, oh, this is better now. <laughs> Yeah, the the good old days of using an infusion calculator app. Oh god, I, why did you remind me of that garbage? Because <laughs> I came in right before. It oh changed. my god, what an awful time to play this game! You had to sit there and just be like, "Wait a minute, am I five or six above the armor piece?" Because I don't want it to lose it. And people would, like argue. You're getting ready to raid and people like arguing over like how much you're gonna get if you infuse and I'll do just wait because you're gonna do it. A... Not good. Oh my god. Oh. oh, but those super lucky times where you can get like one point more than you should. <laughs> 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 you feel like you hit the lottery. <laughs> you're just like, oh, I did the math wrong, but I but it worked out. It worked out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awesome and and cringy and everything all the above. <laughs> uh, so, tell us about if you had a main, what your main character is. I mean, a lot of people do. Do you have a main character? Is it warlock? Also? Yeah, because uh, you mentioned that. I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a warlock main. Awesome, hundred percent. I do play all of them. Warlock is the one I do everything on first, and I make sure that my warlock is set up. Got all the stuff I want and need, and then I go to the peasants, which are my I Titan and my hunter. <laughs> and <laughs> your second and my Titan is second, and my hunter is neglected because I'm like there's five million hunters jumping around oh. on the floor. So like, why do I need to play another one of those capering rolling on the floor? Like, it's, it's okay. Mm. It's so close. So you're so close. You're so close to the chosen one. Um, it's been nice well, having you. Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, the uh, one of the admins in the clan that I'm in, and uh, one of my better friends, uh, Crazy A. Hey Tim. He uh, he's a hunter main to the point where when we have new people join and they're hunters, I just let him go do his thing and hunt hunter at them, and they can talk about being fabulous or whatever it is hunters do. Did you say fabulous? Fabulous. Oh. <laughs> I forgot well, what cloak really... that was on. I was on a cloak and D one. We never really focused on it that much. I mean, we're we're like that. Each, you know, as far as like sharing the love, uh, mm-hmm. since the Titan main, um, I do like Hunter as my second most. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting too. I've been running my other characters more lately too in the raid and trials because of that whole loop where you want to level things up and then get the the new armor. And, and I don't know, it's just such a, this season is such a good, off to a great start, which I want to definitely focus on some here in a little bit. Uh, what else do you like to do in the game the most? Like what type of activities, PVE, PVP, et cetera? If it's not a raid, then PvP. Okay. I love to raid, but I I would be lying if I said I spent more than most of my time in the Crucible. I'm just in there all the time. I'm actually working on a build so I can get in there right now. <laughs> nice. Uh, do you like to just chill and comp, or just different playlists, or what do you, you kind of like to do? Uh, I mean, probably whatever. I think it's like but... Yeah, I mean, like most people that play the Crucible, I just want to play with other people, so I'll I'll just turn off my brain AFK and control for a while. But I'm I have to pick up Unbroken this season, so I'm just been doing solo comp. I think I got to like 33 and change on 
a couple plays, a couple couple playthroughs. So I'm probably hit it sometime like Wednesday or Thursday if I keep playing. But mm-hmm. I just really like Control because it just reminds me of just Halo and everybody used to run around playing Control and doing that. And other than that, I play Trial sometimes, but I'm not one of those Trial stands because we all know the mode is kind of eh right now. But when I saw Ignis Hammer and I saw the Messenger and I saw that armor, I was like, oh, Bungie, you did it. Back to Trials I go. So I, oh, I hopped on for a card this weekend. Yeah. <clears throat> What about you guys? It's like a mix, or some people like one thing more than the other? Well, let's talk about rates real quick. I mean, I, I love rating, of course. Um, <laughs> what, what would be some of your favorite D2 raids? You don't have to rank them all. Some standouts for you. Okay. Um, I think Last Wish, OG Leviathan, and Deep Stone Crypt. I don't know what it is about those raids. Special Leviathan, they just hit different. Um there's something about Leviathan, I think it's because everyone can kind of just communicate, and it's like a lot of rotations, and there's a lot of movement in that raid, and it's not like the D1 raids where it's like, alright, I've got Relic, all the rest of you just can stand over, we're not even going to hit the Oracles, you can kind of just cleanse in one spot. Everyone's, everyone's there, and it's not like one of those, we're saving the world kind of raids, it's just Callus being chill, and just testing us, and you find out that he's basically just sick and doom bots after us all the time. And I think just like the environment and the atmosphere there, it's pretty cool. Last Wish, I love the lore around the Dreaming City. I love Amkar. I mean, the name of my clan is Remnants on the Amkar. Uh, so I think that's great. Um, and then Deepstone Crypt is probably one of the most visually stunning raids that I've played on a console game. Like, ever. Mm-hmm. And I don't care how many times I hear Deep Stone lullabies. I just love the song. So I think that's why those three stand out for me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Rating is a quite an experience in uh, Destiny. And for those that uh, have never experienced it, I feel sad. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Join up. And Do Deep Stone is a great rate. It's a great teaching uh, rate. Exactly, yeah. That's a good way to put it. Mm-hmm. People who have been scared to raid before have had or have had bad experiences in other raids tend to really appreciate Deep Stone when they run through it. Yeah, Deep Stone was... Sorry, I'm checking for how many clears I have, but Deep Stone was the first raid that actually compelled me to want to go get a seal for it. I was like, oh. They made a really solid raid. I kind of want to show off that I've done it a bunch. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm curious, yeah, how many you have? Yeah, let's uh, 40. Nice. Uh, and then I think we, we took a few weeks off, so yeah. Raids. And then as for fastest Ooh. time, 30 minutes and 6 seconds. That's the fastest that I've done. Nice. That's really good. Nice. Your steps yeah. up up me. I'm at 37 and about 40 for my quickest. That's, yeah, 40 that's for first super short. 56 clears. Oh, wow. I gotta step it up, Kingsley. I'm gonna need you to slow down a little bit. Slow yeah, down. whatever. There's there's other people. In, <laughs> if you look at, the I mean, way higher than me. It doesn't surprise me, considering potentially the first place I met Kingsley was King's Fall. <laughs> As he would. I mean, to answer the question, rating is by far the number one thing I should do in the game, <laughs> and I don't PvP much. That's okay. I know a lot of people don't like that much. But it's a good question for uh, Sin and Des, too. I mean, I'm sure we've talked about it over the time, but what are your guys' favorite things to do in the game? Maybe especially if it's change or if not. The game. <laughs> it's such a, I know, it's such a vague question if you like it all. De- Des, there you go. The game. <laughs> yeah, like, legitimately, I will jump into everything. I am one of the few people... That absolutely adores Gambit. Uh, I will run Gambit just to chill. It's like my new strikes now. Um, I would run trials, but I don't know enough people that would like to run trials. So, but you did run it the other day. Yeah, but that's different. That was for bounties, and I've. I've I, if for nothing else, you can find people usually around and about to run trials for bounties. Yeah, true. But I did run it, and I did. 
things. I mean, don't sell yourself short. Even just getting in to do bounties is more than what most people are willing to do because they have this stigma against trials. I think it's like hyper sweat lords, which it kind of is. But I mean, it's also just like trying to do an LFG raid. It's people that just yeah. want to get in there and get it done. So, but yeah, um, I don't. That and I, I as, as people to listen, no, I, I have a different mentality on Crucible. Um, I have been noted as being an extremely quote unquote chill dude in PvP. Um, there's not a lot to get mad at. Um, and I, I usually, I, I think that mentality to, uh, uh, with you being in the game, you might have heard of, oh, I mean, you might have been around like Crucible Playbook, the subreddit. Yeah. Oh, um, rip. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but, um,. <laughs> Uh, back when Keen Koala translated, like, the art of war into, like, video game PvP mentality really, like, struck a chord with me, and I've just kind of taken that mentality to heart, like, a lot. I, I'm i always trying to, like, find <clears throat> ways I can kind of mentally improve and stuff, and I don't know. And uh, I've gained the mentality, and it's like, oh, this is the strongest thing in the game? Let's see if I can use it. Like, try and put myself on a fairly equal footing, at least. So, yeah. I think that's smart. I don't do that, but I think that's smart. <laughs> I mean, usually, like, last bird. I mean, all through D1, it was, like, one of the best guns in the game, especially for close quarters combat. I sucked with it. I was awful. I never could get, in, like, no, I couldn't do it. No. It's like I loved the gun. I loved its looks. Like before Destiny came out, I saw a picture of it. And I'm like, I want that gun. And luckily, it was one of the first exotics I got. And then it's like, oh, but I'm awful with it. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, then they made it a lot easier to work with now. But anyone that you know took the time to mess with the gun, they have a crazy shot with it. So they're a problem. A little bit. What tickles your fancy sin in the game? Mm. You know, I like to uh, multitask the crap oh, yes. out of everything. <laughs> <Shouldn't even ask. laughs> so I jump around. I don't even typically care about my builds, like what I'm, what I have slotted in my mod slots, what I'm wearing. I do care about what I'm running as far as weapons, but I will jump back and forth between Crucible, Gambit, PvE activities. I'm an equal opportunity offender. I go through all of it, so... But PvE mostly is my jam. And I raid when I typically have time, or if I'm super tired, I'll still jump in and raid just because it's fun to do, and I like seeing other people uh, complete raids. So I like That's to help awesome. when I can. Yep. There's something about this game that the community is generally pretty awesome, right? We help each other out with raids, with PvP, with trials. I mean, yeah, we're always complaining about the stories about LFG groups, but <clears throat> you just find the right community. Like, people in discords, you know, you found a link, a friend can vouch for a certain discord or a group or whatever, a clan, and I'd say more often than not, most of the community is pretty cool. I'd agree with that. And it helps, too, that the developers themselves pretty much promote that, you know, with Inclusion with, you know, treating everyone equal, treating everyone with respect. Uh, it's not just a developer that's just like a fly-by-night, you know, here's a game, we don't care about the community, oh, and we're, the community sucks, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, Bungie's a great company. I can't wait to see what their new uh, game or IP will be. That'll be interesting. Oh, yeah, what was, the, what was it called again? Matter? Matter, yeah. There. Here you go. Thank you. I'm excited, too. I hope it's just another chance for them to tell cool stories. Because that's all I care about. If they keep telling cool stories, I'll play whatever it is. Yeah, I think that's the truth. They got a lot of cool stories as it is. Good game play, good what, stories. That's what I would want also. Some people would want just a PvP-focused game, but I would want something more on the story side. Mm -hmm. I feel like you have to these days. 
Because people are looking for Last of Us at every game that they play, so they want narrative. Yeah. Yeah, leave the battle royales to all the ones that are already out there. <laughs> yeah, just don't do not do anything like... If you're going to step outside the box, Bungie, just do something that wows us and take your time. We'll wait for it. Just like don't rush the game out. Don't Did pull you just say wow? <clears throat> wow us. I mean... I mean <laughs> I didn't mean like World of Warcraft stuff, man. I played it. I played a lot of it, but that's not what I meant. <laughs> okay. Just make it short. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Enhancement shot let's go. What? <laughs> You'll have to forgive them. They basically learned about MMOs last week, um, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, Sensei, please teach us more. Yes. <laughs> No, oh. I can talk about MMOs. <laughs> you just don't want me to talk about MMOs. <laughs> Trust me, nobody wants that. This would be RNG cast style length. Right? Six, six hour podcast later. <laughs> hey, we had one of those. We could. I'd Maybe rather not. If we do, we need to start like at two o'clock in the afternoon, just in case. Go. <laughs> oh God! Uh, so it sounds like you play Destiny a lot. Uh, would you? What would you consider yourself? I, and it's always funny titles and stuff, but kind of like more a moderate hardcore player, something like that. Um, I'll answer that question with the amount of hours I've wasted on Destiny. How about that one? There you go. <laughs> And then you, you and all the listeners at home can decide for yourselves what to call me. Uh, I'm pulling up the site now so I can just find out how much I want to embarrass well, myself. Well, you already have the title of as a friend, so we'll, you know, hopefully Aww. no one else wants to call you anything else weird. But <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what else I'm going to get called. But friend seems to work for me right now. <laughs> Almost as yeah, if they thinking. knew I was going to do this to myself. Time wasted on Destiny is unloading. Um, yeah, I would consider myself <laughs> more of a, uh, a hardcore player. But I also think that hardcore and casual has nothing to do with your time investment. Oh, for sure. It's mentality. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's 100% like your approach, your mentality. Like, I've got Dim open right now. I'm in my vault looking at armor and deleting things that I don't think are <laughs> optimal. So, like, I'm a hardcore nerd for this game. But I was going to... I have a disgusting amount of time in this game, and I was going <coughs> to... Yeah, I've always held to that similar belief myself. I've, mm-hmm. I mean, whether I've had time to be able to sink into it... I mean, I've run a weapon spreadsheet, so I, I have no right to call myself a pure casual. You like, do? Regardless of time spent. Because I, mean, I know too much about this game. I got really too excited much. when I heard weapon spreadsheet... Yes, uh, I was like, hmm? I, no, I, I, all right, back in the day, um, uh, it, uh, <laughs> see, back in the day, I had a YouTube idea, um, which still exists on YouTube and is incredibly awful to go and look it up, but, um, I had this idea of, it was around, it was just before House of Wolves came out, actually. And House of Wolves let us, you know, upgrade practically everything in our vaults. So I had this idea, is like, and I started like that's when I started like looking at the stats of the guns and everything, and using like Destiny Tracker and the Planet Destiny database and crap like that, uh, just to date those resources. Um, uh, yeah, you know, back in the day, they used to actually like have stuff to look in the API. The uh, yeah, light.gg before light.gg. Yeah, <laughs> um, but no, and I came out with this idea. It's like, well, why not just like do this like series thing of like the guns with the better stats? You know, what's going to perform better? What's going to feel better? Um, and all this, that, and the other. And I did an extraordinarily dry reading of just that and it's a bunch of weapons and it's a bunch of stat numbers and it's really dry it's awful it's cringy um but it led to me building a spreadsheet of where weapons dropped 
what their base stats were, min max capabilities, crap like that. And, oh, yeah. Then I joined Derp, and I told a couple of individuals or DRP, and I called a couple, t- you know, told a couple individuals I kept such a spreadsheet just to, you know for personal information. And uh, <laughs> which was a uh, Holden Court and Burning Wing. Um, all of a sudden, Mister McBag was like, "Well, why don't you like put one out so people can read it?" I'm like, "Oh, yeah, I could do that. I guess." Like, and oh, so yes. for years, people, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, so for I mean, up until because I, I dropped out of Destiny for. 10, 11 months uh, because I lost internet, so um so, but yeah, up from what was that that was just coming out, Joker's Wild but from House of Wolves to Joker's Wild, I maintained where weapons could drop, what they could do, uh, I at least dropped the min-max once that, from because I mean, static rolls, you didn't really need min-max too much um, yeah. but yeah, so and now I'm st- uh, striving to find the motivation to actually sit down for a couple hours to re-catch up on that spreadsheet. I'm trying. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, you know, I'm not trying to push you if you're too busy, but uh, I'm sure people would want to see it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely something I'm still, I, I still occasionally will, like, bring my docs back up and, like, start working on it again. But I know I'm going to have to, like, sit down for, like, it takes a couple of hours um to really like die you know look at the look up this gun to compare my stats make sure my stats are still accurate uh fill in any blanks or any new information i may have missed out on um yeah so we'll have it done like that <laughs> <laughs> sure <laughs> Exclusive, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's that's my only strive. Is just uh, then it's the start of a new season, so and I've been raiding a lot beforehand, uh, so the game has been taking priority over my information about the game. But yeah, well, we all know works. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> right. We podcast. We're like, wait, we can't play right. Well, Sin's still playing, but uh, we can't play right now because we're podcasting. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I can't so. prove it. I am. I, I will admit, I'm still farming for a shadow price. I'm literally in my vault, and I'm running out of glimmer. I'm like freaking out. <laughs> See, I I don't know what's different about me. I just cannot multitask well with that. Like, if I was trying to even just look at my vault, I would be like two thousand percent even worse on the podcast. I would have called it Destiny Guardian News dot net pod. <laughs> It's like, even though I messed up at the beginning, it would have been worse. I was going to say, we kind of did that, so I mean, you might as well play. I okay, you I'll, I'll start playing yeah. then. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I'll, I'll correct it by saying destinynewshub.com, correct a million times. But uh, <laughs> uh, no, this is awesome. Well, let's, let's uh, and again, any other questions, you know, getting to know you, we'll bring up as we go along. But I'm excited. We need to talk about the new season is upon us. I feel like it's been... A couple weeks. It's been an excellent week, right? It's been it has new it's season. Awesome. I don't even know if we have to start anywhere particularly. I mean, we can just jump in. Like thoughts, like you know, how do you uh, feel first about thought? That? Oh yeah, go ahead, Des. I was about to say first thought: female cabal have horn have tusks. Mm. Thought over. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> he brought it back. Brought it back. <laughs> yes. And Des, I do have a question on that. Uh, oh, God. You know, because the lore, I mean, it's just been in the lore is uh, the obvious thing. Anything else you want to tell us about that? Because, you know, people like me that didn't have the time or desire to read up on it. You said there was two that we've known about. Uh, what do mm-hmm. we know about female cabal? Um, there are two, and they're both closely related to Callus. The other one, his general, I can never remember her name, but she has a similar name to Sibu Arath. In fact, she has the Arath part. In her name. her name, right? Yeah. Um, but it's like super long and weird because you know she's a cabal. But uh, that was basically Callus's, if I'm remembering right, she was Callus's like uh, general, mm-hmm. like you know the 
oh god commander in chief there we go mm-hmm. um of the military forces uh and hilariously, Callus tried to raise his daughter Cadel to be separate from the normal warmongering ways of the Cabal. But she took to this other figure a little too well and ended up pretty much being raised like your typical warmongering Cabal. <laughs> um, which is why she teamed up with Gaul, uh... That one scion that I still can't remember the name of, which is super sad and traitorous because uh, Callus told the scion that he was thinking of freeing the scions from Cabal rule, and that's why she that that's why the scion teamed up with Gaul because she's like, nope, that can't happen. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so his daughter, his general, everyone put him on the Leviathan and shipped him out into space. And that's what we knew. Yep. Well, that yeah. Also, didn't really leave to begin with that often to begin with. Like, yeah. He was on his ship, and he wouldn't. There was no like diplomacy. It was join the cabal. I'll just eat your planet. Right. (laughs) It's like become my shadow, or else. He he was basically Thanos, essentially. I mean, yeah. I mean, the choice is theirs, right? Yeah. I mean, you could (laughs) die. That was a choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is she saying in the the cut scene that we watched? Like, my father was weak, or something like that, or I forget the yeah. word that she used. But yeah, that that makes more sense now. Hearing yeah, I mean, actually. she has. There's there's no love loss there. Uh, yeah, because that entire like counts. I mean, he was. Hilariously, I guess, also to uh, superimpose the Roman Im- imagery that the Cabal evoke, Callus was kind of the Julius Caesar. His entire council turned against him. Mm-hmm. Instead, they just didn't stab him. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Only metaphorically, not literally. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, Scott, what do you think of the new season so far? So far, I, I'm i liking it. I know it's still the first week, and we're starting to... And actually, you know what? I feel like I hate time gates. The only, thing, the only negative I'm going to bring up is time gates, because I just want to advance my helm so far and just upgrade that as much as possible. But I'm excited to do the weekly challenges. And I think the weekly challenges hit a lot better than the community at large was expecting them to. So, I think with the new weapons, I think the fact that we're getting reasons to go back to the moon, we get reasons to go back to the Dreaming City, um, think what you will about reprised weapons and armor, but half the community wants them, half the community doesn't, they're going to get flack regardless, but the execution so far, I think it's fine. Obviously, there's a lot of bugs, but there's also a lot of bug reports, there's a lot of quality of life changes that they didn't tell us about, even like the, the quest screen upgrade. I think that was awesome. I feel like questing in this game was a lot harder than it needed to be because the UI was just completely cluttered and it didn't seem like it had a tender love and care. And now it actually looks like something you can tell someone, why didn't you read the quest screen? Because it tells you everything and even shows you what you're going to get. Um, mm-hmm. But by and large, I think that this season, at least to me, is an indicator that moving forward, Bungie's going to be moving with a lot more care and precision. I don't think it's a lot of like a lot of the excuses I think that they've given us in the past. Some I think were okay. Some were they probably needed to say less. But I think from this season forward, we're going to see a lot better from them. So I'm happy. Yeah, and and definitely at <clears throat> one point. I mean, there's so much we can say, but yeah, the seasonal <clears throat> weekly challenges. I we had been talking in the podcast about being cautiously excited about that and boy they do pique my interest and i got them all done and i can't wait to see what comes out next week <laughs> i'm like excited for that even though they're just some of them are just such simple <laughs> things like there if it tells me to go into comp next week i'm going into comp <laughs> even though i don't usually do that <laughs> so i that's that's been a, a plus 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 thing for me 
Uh, Sin, Des, uh, first thoughts. What have you uh, liked about the new season or impressions in general? I mean, I definitely like uh, the layout of the bounties, the uh, new weekly bounties, and the way that you can go back and do them and not feel like you missed out and you can grind them. I think that's a plus for me. Uh, You know, really, that's, I would say, one of the main things, (laughs) probably the big thing. I'm still going to be far behind just with the way my work schedule is, but at least I have a chance to catch up as the weeks progress and not have to be behind. And I kind of related to the augment quests where you had to do them once on a specific week. Uh, That kind of threw me off a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. And I got the mini Sparrow emote. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) for sale for bright dust there's been some good emotes too i bought the flashlight one yeah bungie's coming for my wallet this season they need to relax i know i was thinking about putting the money in for these ornaments and for all these guns there's so many i I broke i spent money (laughs) did y'all get the ship the ship from the uh the wrathborns that's still not for me no, no, oh, yeah. I, I didn't run any of my harbingers this week either. Yeah, I I got to run oh, them still. I got it the first week of the new season. Took me oh. until the new season to get it, but I finally got it. That's awesome. And nice. of course, I put a black memory shader on it because it's one of the best. Uh, it's black and red. Oh, it's. it's uh, Oh, you surely you like uh, what was it? The uh, carbon blood? This one no, is, no, no, uh, no, 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 not carbon blood. Smith. Midnight Smith. <laughs> yeah, um, I've actually fallen in love with Carminica. Uh, That's a good one too. Yeah, mm-hmm. last season's uh, Crucible. Oh my god! Yeah, Carminica salad. Really nice. Show. Um, yeah, uh, but as far as the season goes, I mean, it's first week, so I'm. Um, uh, a little reserved, cautiously optimistic, I believe would be the terminology. Um, like, it's feeling real good right now. I mean, Battlegrounds seems to be the wave mode we've been begging for years for. Um, or at least e- extraordinarily similar. Um, I'm I'm freaking loving it. Uh, yeah, like, holy crap, the entire challenge system, yeah. It's... I can't. I definitely cannot wait to see like uh, how deep and crazy and like specific they do get with some of this stuff, knowing that they kind of can. So yeah, it's, it's going to be super interesting. Um, legitimately, my biggest issue <laughs> with the season hasn't even been in game, but uh, the whole slight communication snafu um, that Bungie's had, like with the whole. Uh, like really finding like late or telling us not really late, but they were quiet like longer than what they would normally be about the whole uh, featured raid snafu from the TWAB. Mm-hmm. That yeah, I mean, like I said, it kind of bugs me. They waited till the TWAB to kind of mention anything that I've noticed. Like maybe. No, DMG said something on Twitter earlier that week, but either way, they waited until now to say something. Yeah. Des, are you there? You might have cut out. You try, uh, yeah, try maybe leaving and coming back. But yeah, I, I, I think we got what he was saying. And also, of course, uh, what do you think about the um, communication snafu of uh, an earlier posting saying we were going to be getting more Cosmodrome, and then, oh, no, we're not anymore. Okay, no there we play go. Land for you. You're back. You're back, Des. I think we heard what you said, though. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can agree on that. My friend Mitch wasn't too excited about, uh, like, he was less than pleased with the idea of the Plague Lands not being flushed out, because we're running Devil's Lair, you know, farming stuff, and he's just like, it's, but it's right here. There's no reason why they sh- they shouldn't just just do it, and 
I guess well, re- re- patrols reading their decision. Yeah, and I think reading their decision to focus on new content, I think, is great. I just felt like for people that that mattered, like that that specific content mattered. I think they could have said something sooner, and I think that that's just one thing that Bungie's always, to me, uh, struggled with, which is forthright communication, being proactive about things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely <laughs> give them, a, always give them a pass, like, well, not always, but like, yeah, not giving us information, sure, but like, I can't think of too many recent examples, though, when they said they were going to do something, and then now they're not, they changed their mind. That's, That's it, but it's not even that. They, I, I, I kind of wonder, is, is, are they just getting too big and they got miscommunication internally and then someone high up decided, okay, we don't have time to flush out Cosmodrome now, but no one in the company remembered that they wrote that article <laughs> earlier on saying that they were still going to do it. Ooh. So like, it would have been way better if they told us before instead of people just saying, wait a second, what's happening? And then, oh yeah, yeah, we decided not to. That's, that's fair. That's, yeah, that's just the... I'm surprised. I, I, I'm i not upset about it, but I like, again, I yeah. give a lot of credit that usually I don't feel like that would have happened or should have happened, and so I'm just kind of surprised it did. No, but that's a, really, that's a really fair take, too. Internal communication could just be not as pristine as possible because they have so many people working on so many different projects. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it is what it is. Uh, I, <laughs> it's, it's fine. Um, I'm a little sad that more Cosmodrome isn't coming back because I would have appreciated that. But if they had to pick one over the other, I guess fine. Put more resources in new stuff. Yeah. That's most definitely my take on it. Like, I would love more Com- the Cosmodrome to come back, but if it's going to co- come at the cost of like something subpar, like major supposed to release, I'd rather they skimp on a reprisal. TBH. Yeah, I just I wonder if it sets an expect it sets a precedence though that anything that they bring back will just now be a very limited version, smaller Dreadnought, smaller Venus. You know what I mean? If they didn't have time to flush out Cosmodrome, will this be an issue in the future again? I mean, depends on if they can I think, grow. I think as long as they're forthright with the fact that they're going to... like if When they bring back a space, I think they need to be clear about the capacity in which it's going to return. And I've, yeah, Because yeah. I thought the community would be like, all right, we're not going to get like full Cosmodrone? You sure? Then they're like, no, we're not, stop it. Okay, sure. But we asked you, and you guys said you're not going to do it. Problem. No problem. But if they tell us that we're going to get something back in totality and then they don't do it that's when it becomes like a come on Bungie yeah we're trying we're trying for you here you gotta you gotta communicate a little better than that Mm -hmm. yeah um but hey it's uh, the devil's lair back as a nightfall is freaking fun (sighs) oh so good so happy (laughs) yeah I mean, I've heard a lot of people aren't super happy that not a lot has changed, but I but really, adore, I adore it. But really, things have changed. I mean, more than you might think. Um, there, it, more than I, someone was talking about it. I think it's more than even just the bricks that they added. Wasn't there other things? That, I'm trying to remember now. Well, of course, at the end, you can't hide, and there's not as many places in the end arena, so that's changed a little bit. I mean, can and, we talk about the enemy density? Yeah, an enemy density. Did we have all I mean, the small servitors protecting? No. No, 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 no. That's yeah. definitely a D2 mechanic that they've used for Sepix, and I, again, adore that idea. Yeah. Um, and I love the fact that the Briggs are in um, the Blast. Uh not that I could say that from that name from memory, but because I'm at currently in the blast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, just to clarify, because I I have a horrible memory. Um, but uh, but no, like I said, I adore the Briggs being here because it makes this area something more of a challenge to go through. Um, because beforehand, there wasn't 
a lot, stopping you from just sparrowing in to the right side and taking mm-hmm. down the tank, no problem. Yeah. Those brigs are a little bit of a problem. Yep. And more enemies, of course, you know, champions, if you're running on 2070 or higher or 1270 or higher. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yes, the overall structure and the name of the boss is the same, but it's not, it's good. And I'm happy that they did the redo music. You know, that is just, uh, I love it. Just jam out to that. Yeah. Headbanging yeah. in the middle. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And it's proof that it was a good strike. And people that have not played it, you know, I, I always loved hearing people's opinions that are only played D2 and not D1. And like hearing from like Lumina and our Discord and other people are like, yeah, yeah, this is fun. This is a fun strike. Even though in some uh, ways it's basic, just the enemy density and just the way it's orchestrated at the end just works. Yeah, it has a and, flow. You're just like you kill things, and you move to the next room, and you kind of have like some down periods. But then you also have those periods, like you say, with the density, where you feel like the waves are never ending, and you're just like, man, when are we gonna get a chance to breathe? And then it's over, and you're just like, all right, cool, next section. Now you're dealing with like vehicles and nice open space, and you, it just moves from so many different vistas that you're just you feel like you're yeah. grooving the entire time. It's just it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I know I've mentioned just tonight uh, running a few of these with uh, Kato and uh, Zebrak. Um, like, I definitely appreciate what Bungie has done with uh, the majority of the D2 strikes. Like, you know, trying at least to branch out into mechanics and different, like, flows. I, I can appreciate that, but still, there's just something about the simplicity of Sepix that just still is, like scratches an itch mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah and even the simplicity of i mean yeah it is it is damage gated but but what i was going to get at is instead of just only relying damage gated even when you're doing the actual damage you know he teleports around he jukes you when you're trying yep. to like you throw a nova bomb at the wrong time oh well never mind <laughs> you know <I> missed <laughs> so uh, that's that's great. You just gotta be on top of it all. And I love hearing people's reactions that aren't used to sepics, like going to a rocket, you know, launch a rocket, and there it goes sailing, <laughs> and it's just dang it! It's like, yep, you that's that why you, that's why you wait on sepics. He's uh, <laughs> he's a mover. Squirrel. Yeah, there's also the uh, the cool thing about the time gate in that, and also like the time gate that's in the battlegrounds, is that it's not like oh, what's the name of that strike? I have to look it up because my brain. Um, it's the fickle strike, um, the hollow oh, lair. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's not like hollowed lair where there's like legitimately like a whole phase and a time that you can't do anything like. The time gate for damage on Sepix and in the battlegrounds is just based on how quickly you can either kill the servitors or kill the incendiaries that show up. And oh, yeah, yeah. That's the kind of time gate I think is better for this game because no one with all the charge with light and crazy mods and weapons that we're stockpiling, no one wants to be able to just stand around and kind of look at each other because the boss says, no, you can't kill me yet. But if there's mm-hmm. like an engaging way to, like, hey, I'm getting low as a as a boss. I'm gonna run and hide and go get my general, and you kind of have to deal with them. Fine, I'll go kill them really fast because I'm still kind of shooting at stuff at the end of the day. But then I'm coming for you, and I and I think that is a better way to to get things across to the to the player base. So Bungie, if you're listening ever and you're doing time gates, make it something interactive that doesn't immediately elongate things just to make it longer just make it so that we can choose how quickly we want to get through things mm-hmm. yep oh yeah good stuff um I, i've been having fun yeah myself battlegrounds does seem like a pretty cool activity i love the amount of movement that there is in it i'm, I'm excited to see what the the other two will be like and if they will have harder or heroic versions but all in all i say it's pretty good thing and when i was first playing 
this week, maybe like two days in or so, I could say like, okay, yeah. And we don't know everything that's coming during the season, but on the initial impressions, yeah, maybe the activities could get stale pretty quickly. But I quickly had a change of thought once I started playing with the war table more and the umbral decoding system and just all the weapons that we have of just ideal roles, you know, like most all of these new weapons are pretty sought after and there's some pretty cool roles that we want. And then I was thinking, you know, we're at a point now where uh, we can have something that we're always going for. I am sure if you just play the game like crazy, maybe you'll still be done in a few weeks for everything that's available. But I think most of us, we're going to be continuing to run trials week after week or continuing to run the night falls because we <sighs> haven't got or gambit or, or, you know what I mean? And we're, we're just going after these things and some people may not like that, but to me, it's something that I have a reason to come week after week, do the weekly challenges, run these strikes and activities that I uh, don't want to grind it just for power level. I want to grind it now because I'm actually <coughs> knowing I might get a weapon that I like. So I think it's a plus for me. That's fair. I mean, good lord, I've already ran apparently like 26 nightfalls. Oh. <laughs> yeah, That's I hear a that intense. drop rate is pretty... I've heard some other people too. I know Verston's run a lot. Uh, I think I only had to, had to end up running about six. I got pretty lucky. I, I, I only realized that because I had the Triumph pop up like two nightfalls ago. So, yeah. <clears throat> oh, I had a question for you guys. What um, what's everyone's opinion on Salvager Salvo so far? I don't have it yet. I'm actually working on getting it now. I just need the uh, the points. I'm 100 percent of the the bottom portion, but mm-hmm. I need to get like I guess grenade kills. So that's what I've been working on. Oh, grenade cool. or grenade launcher kills. Yes. Oh yeah, I'm I'm stacking it. Um, now, like I, like I told people earlier, uh, the shatter kills from a glacier nade count as grenade kills. Run stasis, so, you're using yeah. a titan, use a slide, and oh, use God. the fragment that gives you grenade energy for shattering crystals. And you're good. That's a good uh, tip. What I think is important, too, for that is that... Uh, if you're working on any of the gilded titles, they all want you to get grenade launcher kills. So try yeah. to mix it and leave. just find out what like what thresholds of kills you have to get for your gilded title and just get that at the minimum, or at least get it when you start to work on the uh, the ornaments. But they you do have to get grenade launcher kills in all of the gilded titles, I think, so far except for one of them. I have to double check. Well, the only I one I can get gilded is Dredgen, so. Which is still one of the harder ones to get now because yeah. it is 75 modes, so. Yeah, um, the the Gilded portion, though, isn't bad. No. Yeah. It's not that bad. No, it's not awful. I'm trying to do Unbroken Second. and the Gilded in the same season, so wish me luck, guys. <laughs> now. We'll of course be with you. I will give whoever. There's some dude. Second day I logged in. Some dude had gilded dredged in. Damn. Whoa. Second day of the season, and I had to see this dude in the tower with dredged in in orange text, and I'm like, wait a minute. That's different. <laughs> I would not mess with that guy. Chanel for right. her. Trump, I her. <laughs> right. It's like, holy crap. Uh, it's like, I think that's why I end up not really caring about a lot of titles, because... I mean, earlier, a lot of them were like RNG, so you'll get them kind of when you get them, but a dude like that? Now that's <laughs> That's impressive. a little much. It's a little much. <laughs> I know Bo Solaris has been a previous guest of ours. He got his pretty quickly, too. I, I don't think it was second day, but I remember seeing on Twitter. It was definitely at least a couple days ago. I know so, Bo. Yeah, that's you funny. know him? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he grinds a lot, for sure. Um... What do you think? I, I don't have it either yet. I've been focusing more on the bow, which I love, by the way. But uh, do you have it, the grenade launcher? 
Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty cool so far. I had to get used to the the velocity on it because I was expecting something like a Truth Teller or um, or Wings Mall, but that little projectile moves. It's quick. Yes. And chain reaction is kind of nutty on a breach loading grenade launcher. It's um, everything just explodes, and you have a choice between. Demolitionist, which means you'll never have to reload the gun ever, pretty much. Or you can run through Ambitious Assassin and make it even more of a meme to kill things with. Uh, so, I don't know. I think the gun's pretty fun, but just remember, we just got a 750 um, SMG in the kinetic slot, and they just gave us a shiny new breach load grenade launcher and energy slot. So for all those people that are missing Mountaintop Recluse, and I can't believe I'm telling you this, give it a shot. Right? <laughs> it's just it. the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I also have it, and it is... Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It is a freaking ad-clearing monstrosity, thanks to uh, Chain Reaction. It is hilarious. Oh, I'm going to focus on that now. I I'm I think I'm halfway through the the longer step. What is it? The points or whatever. Oh, and as someone actually pointed out to me, I believe it was Cato. Um, the camo is not just an effect; it is actually like layers of colors. So, if you shade the base gun, it will still be camo. Yeah, like just in I... the color pattern of the shader. <laughs> The only thing that changes the uh, the pattern is the ornament, because the ornament will change a lot of the the primary color to the to the the trigger guard, I think, or something like that. I forgot where it puts it, but you you can't change that camel until you actually change the uh, the ornaments from the core playlist. Yep. There's so many good weapons. Yeah, I mean, I could see <laughs> wanting to in PVE wanting to main this a lot because it's so good. From what I've been hearing. And then, but I love the bow. I oh my gosh, there's just so many, so many. There's too many. That's that's my only complaint. Like people are like, "Yo, there's no good weapons." But like, I don't know. Depending on how you play, there's too many good weapons for me. Mm-hmm. So as another there's person that also likes bows, what is your um, what is your preferred way to pair? Like, what weapons do you like to pair with bows? I don't know why I asked that question. Like, I was confused. Well, actually, I don't. This is one of the first bows I've loved. <laughs> so it's kind oh. of wild for me. I haven't. I'm not usually a bow guy, but th- for some reason, this one really attached to me. I really like how it works, and I th- I may be trying more bows soon. But um, it just yeah, it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to tell you two tips with bows. Um, if you're using a precision bow, so anything that um, has like a longer draw time. Those can kill, if you ever step into the Crucible at all, they kill with two body shots. Mm-hmm. Just full draw, let it go, and I'm in a bot and they're dead. And obviously they do a lot of damage, the highest damage uh, per shot weapon in game, PvE-wise or PvP. That's a primary. Um, and for those of you who don't know this, this is like a hidden perk on the Monarch. It gives you plus 20 mobility, so it acts like a, it, it's basically a, uh, it's a lightweight weapon that also makes you just physically like walk faster, too. So next yeah. time you get a chance to run the monarch, you'll double check and see that you actually will just moving faster than everybody else. Hmm. I should know this. Does Telesto still do that? I know it did in D one. I think it does. Right? Yeah. Didn't it have like Battle Runner built in or something it's, like that? It's hard to say, like the archetype benefits of exotics because we don't get to see their uh it's but like I a like sunshot. I believe it's technically a lightweight weapon. It's still lightweight, yeah. You still got the yeah. lightweight bonus from it. Yeah. Yeah, in D1, I would I would use Telesto down in the Thrallway, you know, <laughs> for uh, uh, Crota. Oh, uh, for the Abyss? Uh, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, for the Abyss, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thrallway, you know what I mean? But yeah, um, mm-hmm. I feel like in D2, I don't know that it has that feature, but... Um, I just came to mind because of what you were mentioning about Le Monarch. Yeah, um, hidden perks and interactions in the game is one of my favorite things to try to find. 
So anytime I hear about a weapon that does something that it doesn't state, I'm ex- mm-hmm. I'm ecstatic. I can't wait. Tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. I was actually shocked to find out uh, Outbreak <clears throat> still has its hidden perk from D1 of uh, Persistence. It still has Persistence? Like it, yeah, like as you fire it, it grows oh, more accurate. That's yeah. why it's like... Yeah, because yeah. it gun turns into a laser beam. Yep. But I saw... Cool. Yeah, I happened to see one of those videos it's like, hidden perks on exotics and they mentioned Outbreak. It's like, <laughs> like he says, like tell me more. <laughs> and sure enough, they were just shooting at a wall. But yeah, that that, that cone just kept getting narrower and narrower. It's like nice. <laughs> That's so cool. And, I, and it's a shame. Oh, um, speaking of weapons, speaking of the season, Skyburner's Oath is. I'm working on the catalyst right now because of the battlegrounds. But I remember right. that gun not having damage drop off. That has zero yeah. damage drop off. Yeah. Because of the explosives, I believe. But for sure, hip fire doesn't. I'm for sure yeah. they have one. The hip fire projectiles that just hit clean the same damage no matter where you fire it, which is nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we do have yeah, eater sometimes. I remember, uh, of course, I do have. A, I say my memory is awful, but when it comes to certain things, it's immaculate. Um, but yeah, I remember when Bungie mentioned reworking Skyburners to that. They compared it to uh, basically a grenade launcher, I believe. Oh, that's awesome. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think every exotic should have some kind of like hidden hidden something, like the armor piercing rounds that are on Thorn. Right. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, cool. Any other thoughts about this season? I'm trying to look at the uh, TWAB to see if there's anything super important we need to talk about, but I think we kind of went over that. So, Oh, we don't have to get into it, but did you guys hear about the uh, Tex Mechanical weapon? Like, like, did you hear details about it? I think I haven't someone... Looked it up yet. I haven't looked it up. Uh, it's not like I'm against hearing details, but also I haven't really... I've been doing so many things, I haven't really cared to look it up either. Uh, someone That's gave right. me like a name or something, and I forget what it even was. So it kind of just they already. If went you have online. a smaller channel here, I can put the picture in. Yes, because like Feel the free. official art, the official art is up somewhere. Someone grabbed it on Twitter. Feel free. Someone might have done that. I'm I'm scrolling back now, but we have so much. I, it wouldn't be bad to to do it. No, I don't think uh, I see that. It might have been a different Discord. Um, yeah. So feel okay. free. Yeah, I'll grab it right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, we, that's supposed to be a full exotic quest, right? From what we're mm-hmm. understanding. Yeah. And they actually that's teased important. it in the uh, trailer for the season. Yeah. The that's text right. mechanical looking skull. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Which is one of the times I definitely realize I'm way too much of a nerd about this game when I can see something like that and go, <laughs> Hey, that's text mechanical. I think all of I think all of our like the people that pay attention from D one especially looked at that and go oh and we <laughs> we were all just like is that first curse coming back really exactly exactly was just about to say like that that's right a lot of <laughs> like, people were saying the, that the old school people are like first curse <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know oh, that was wow. my thought hope you had me you had me a go. Uh, awesome. I know this is the spoilers channel, but I'll still put the spoiler tag on it because some people might misclick or something. Awesome. <laughs> that I consider it. If they do, do shame fair. on them. I, mean, I <laughs> we agree. We sin, shame on our members. I spoiler tag the name of the weapon and the image. There you go. The oh my god. It, yeah, yeah, I know. It's a lever <laughs> action. <laughs> That's right. I did hear about this. <laughs> oh God, yes, that's going to be amazing. <laughs> I can't wait. I, I, oh, I, I love perks. Yeah, there. I love the uh, I love the flare that they put on Tex mechanical weapons, like the whole gun flip and everything. The freaking whip crap on no whip, whip crack on uh, chaperone, like all of that crap. I just love the the extra details. 
So you can take this with a grain of salt, but this is an excerpt from a tweet of the person that linked it, uh, that leaked it. Um, but the intrinsic perk and the what the catalyst does are listed there. And obviously it's subject to change, grain of salt kind of stuff, but I don't know what it is, but lately but all the people that have been leaking Destiny stuff have been on point. So I'm excited. Mm. I don't know. That sounds a little too samey. Yeah, I agree, but I feel like it, they'd have to balance the lack of range that thing has. I hope it's not that, and I hope it's something a little different, but I think about yeah. Ash from Overwatch, and her gun functions similarly, and so does the 33rd repeater in Apex, so hopefully they do something a little different. Yeah, I mean, like I said, then we kind of have that, sort of. I mean... Yeah, the little one. <laughs> Yeah, which I mean, it's it's different enough to still potentially be valid, but also at the same time, I'm definitely hoping for something a little different. Yeah, hey, well, real quick, that, for, that those, was... for those oh, ahead, that are fine. just listening and not sure, please uh, check. Uh, feel free and join our Discord and look in the Destiny Spoilers channel. Yeah, if you're into that. If not, just stay confused and be blissful, blissfully ignorant. Yes, while the rest of us nerd over things that haven't happened yet. <laughs> is that, is that uh, a problem? Tis, tis my life. <laughs> I don't think that's a problem. Well, we have that to look forward to. I think someone said that also that they might we might be expecting another secret whisperous whisperish type mission or something inside the land tank, but I thought the strike was supposed to be in there, so I don't know if that's just hopefulness or what, or if there's going to be two purposes in there. I heard we're getting a dungeon. Maybe that's what it was. Dungeon, whatever. Yeah. Uh, we're getting a new strike also, though, right? So there's... Mm-hmm. Well, proving grounds, yeah. Yeah, proving yeah. grounds. And I thought that was in the land tank, or was I just misunderstanding that? No, no proving grounds was the land tank. People yeah. have been uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. glitching in there by accident. All week, actually. Yeah, that's. Oh, is issue. is that the area that I got trapped into? If you die during the battleground, sometimes or sometimes it just load yeah. you in there. It'll just load you into the lane tank sometimes. And there's no way out. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go far? Can you explore much? Um, no. It's okay. it's a little room. There's another little room you can get into, but then there's a door that won't open, and then the way out is this giant door that still won't open. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, and uh, what I said before about them teasing the the exotic thing in the trailer, I actually didn't mean the bull. I meant the screeb at the end of the at the end of the ah. trailer. That's the rumor is that's the dungeon. All right. Hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely not opposed to uh, scorn. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go shoot us some scream in a dark dungeon. I'll play Dead Space, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so much to look forward to. I mean, anything that f- features the uh, the lesser featured people, you know, like poor scorn. They haven't really had a time to shine since uh, since Forsaken. Well, I was thinking about that the other day that the um th- that enemy type the uh geez now what's their general uh the fallen but not the fallen you know what I mean the um scorn looks see oh no scorn oh. yeah not just scream scorn scorn yeah sorry you oh yeah that, already. that we haven't you know and I guess it was kind of they were just tangled shore blah 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 but like. Was that just resources that they're not going to add upon anymore, or so maybe we can see that some more going forward? Yeah, I hope so. Cause especially because like Callus has been like stowing them away in the Leviathan like a weirdo. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when isn't Callus being a weirdo? That's true. Grinding up planets into dirt so he can drink it as wine. But he also like. <laughs> Didn't realize he had like a giant hydra down in the gutter, and he was just like, "Oh, uh, guardians, can you guys do me a favor? Listen, I don't want to talk about it, but there's just a giant hydra. Can you can you <laughs> get it? Actually, he didn't even know it was a hydra. He just knew there was something in in the engine, in the world leader engine, yeah. that was like causing it not to work. And when we saw what it was, we we're just like, dude, 
Do you I send anyone they... down here ever? <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually haven't seen anything, but apparently that's uh, that got stuck in there when while he was attempting to eat Nessus. Mm. Oh, yikes! Yeah. yeah, that is pretty wild. I have to admit. <laughs> I mean, like I said, that's what I that's what I hear. Um, I like I, said, I haven't seen anything on that. But I've read from multiple sources that it's from when the Leviathan tried to, or was attempting to eat Nessus. So, yeah. That's crazy. Awesome. Well, what's what's the main systems you play on right now? Just PS5? Uh, PS5 and whenever I upgrade my PC sometime in the next year, I'll be on there. Um, Cross-play will come probably before then. Yeah, it should it should actually launch with um, Witch Queen? Yeah, that's what I'm expecting. Also, so where are you guys all right? playing it? I am PS4. Ooh, the the one and only. These scrubs say PC, but uh, well, we have all three. <laughs> We're all over nice. the place, but probably PS4 the most, and then. I, I was just asking, yeah, I mean, we need to, uh, you know, group up sometime and uh, feel free and, you know, post things in our Discord. Or if you ever have uh, needs from your groups, you know, feel free and shoot us, shoot our Discord requests because we are not shy to LFG requests in our Discord. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, the, the clan I run, we're very similar. Like, everyone's pretty chill. I try to make it so that everyone just feels comfortable coming and going as they please because it's a game, it's a hobby. But, I mean, there's one person we teach for LO- tease for LOGing all the time, but that's because it's just like what we do with this one person is tease them over everything they do. But um, yeah, the more the merrier. If some if they want to raid and they have friends that have never done it or somebody wants to run trials, like my friend uh, Lady Phantom, we ran her through trials this weekend. We She was talking for weeks about how bad she has a Crucible, and we did one card and went flawless. Oh, nice. So it sounds like we need to play with you then. Oh no, no, it's not me. My friend Beast Mode eight thirty. He's the one that did all the work. I just kind of looked. Well, I him. was just, I was like, uh, I was really good at being a distraction and getting radar pings and getting people to focus <laughs> on me. And he flanks with Arbalest and just dumpsters everyone. But um, we we're very big on opening up to whoever's friends of whoever, so I'm looking forward to us all just getting some games and raids together soon. Nice. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, Any other things on your mind or things you wanted to bring up before we start slowly bringing this to close this evening? Uh, No, I think we covered everything that was on my mind. Awesome. Well, and we'll want to get all the ways for people to contact you, but we always like to have a Bonus question at the end. Sure. We didn't tell you ahead of time. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. It's so controversial. What's your favorite dessert? <laughs> favorite dessert? Okay. Um... I think I'm going to go... Oh, my God. This is this is the most controversial question I've answered all day. You, okay. you can go any way you want. You can even say multiple things. Hey, you run with it however you Okay, so I'll give you a favorite in three categories, and then from there it doesn't matter as any one of those. So if it's ice cream, um, we're talking either Rocky Red or coffee. I'm cool with either. Um, <laughs> All if right. it's like, All right. if it's like, if it's baked, because I don't want to get into the like cake pie discussion. I'm just gonna go with brownies, like off the bat, and then. <laughs> Because I'm just gonna, I'm gonna lateral that whole cake pie <laughs> debate. It's like the biggest fight <laughs> since the dawn of time. I'm not there for this. And then the other one would probably be um, just like those Luigi's like frozen ices. I don't know what it is about them, but those are oh yeah, those are pretty good for sure. For sure, uh, nice. I, think I was expecting like we've gotten like a like a variety answer. Right? I was expecting one of those questions I got from like Gibbo when I went on the Destiny Addicts podcast, and I was like, "Oh God, going to hit me." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I <laughs> I'm not too crazy here. Our version of the controversy was just dessert. 
<laughs> yeah, that's fine. I was hit with. I thought you were going to ask me cake or pie, and I was going to be like, "Oh man, uh, I'm sweating now." We're not. We're not asking you like, is is hot dog on bread a sandwich or crazy things like that? You're, you're oh being... man, yeah. I'll just Sorry. link you to a Matt Pat video where he goes on in about it. That's okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's a sandwich. I'm just saying. We'll, we'll, uh, Was we'll, that we'll like chili as a soup conversation oh, too? It is. I'm, I'm not taking this bait. <laughs> well, <laughs> no. Is a cake a pie or a pie a cake? <laughs> no. Which one's better? It's strudel. It's Your strudel. mom's. Ah, got him. Anyway, oh. um, sorry. <laughs> that was good. I walked into that. <sighs> um, sorry. I have opinions about such things. And uh, hey, we, we'll allow it. We'll, we'll, we'll but also a... at the same time, you never know if my opinions are because they are my opinion or because I'm trying to troll people. Ooh, see, that's that's so. Right. Oh, there is something I wanted to rem- remind people. Um, yeah, st- uh, Drang and Mida Mini Tool, you can complete their masterworks now. Yes, they were that's bugged. right. You can. They were they were bugged until the reset. I forgot because they're not in the patch. That's not mm-hmm. in the patch notes. Yes, and they do have now a unlimited fusion cap. Yeah, that is excellent inf- right. information. Thanks for that. I... See, if you never asked me my favorite dessert, <sighs> I would have remembered. <laughs> <laughs> it was because of that, right? <laughs> now, yeah. how does that relate to Crowdy? <laughs> I don't know. It was just it just, just got in my head. So we were talking, and I was like, "Wait a minute! I remember now." Hey, it gives you an opportunity to think, you know, a lot of times people ask that question, like anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no, but you know, now you have some time to think about it. <laughs> so no, it's, it's been, it's been a blast, sir. I mean, a lot of guests we have on and I don't know what questions to ask, but thanks for keeping the conversation going and asking us questions too. the hard hitting questions that sin has to stop playing and think about to answer. <laughs> Sorry yeah. about that. I didn't just, mean to cause we'll any we'll mental just anguish. <laughs> we'll just roll with it. Just roll with it. That's right. Yes. I still don't have this shadow price. I'm a little disappointed. Yeah, I've been running a few this calls. week. Oh, a few? How many of you ran, Sand? Not as much as you. I was about to say. <laughs> but, a few, but a few in my book. <laughs> How many have you run since the, we started the podcast? Uh, this is my third, and I did some Crucible. I did some Mayhem. I did some regular strikes to finish off a Pinnacle. Uh, let's see. What else did I do? I did um, – yeah, that was about it. I'm just working on little, these these bounties. We have a little mini segment where we like to ask a live live update. What are you doing in the game, Sin? What am I getting distracted with in game? That. Mm-hmm. <sighs> but anyways, uh, remind us and let us know just any way that you want people to get a hold of you. And of course, we want to remind everyone to, you know. Yeah, they can. Um, Newshub.com. <laughs> they can look me up at uh, Scott Free with two underscores, and that'll pretty much get you Twitter, Instagram. Uh, my that's actually my PSN ID, um, and then if you want to add the numbers and stuff, you can do um, Scott Free two underscores pound sign ninety three oh two for Discord. Feel free to hit me up, and uh, you can also come to the Discord server that I'm started recently. It's called the Destiny Two Clans Hub. I'm gonna start inviting clans soon, but it's gonna be a Discord server just for um, anyone that's running a clan that doesn't necessarily want to run a whole server on a discord and everyone can come there's going to be a lot of different channels there's going to be class specific channels each clan will have their own category and stuff stuff like that so feel free to hit me up on any of those uh socials oh that's an excellent idea yeah thanks for mentioning that because i could see i can see a need for that also for for some people yeah. excellent yeah thanks for thanks for all that information and um Seriously, it's been a pleasure having you on, and uh, you're you're welcome back as a uh, honored friend and guest of the show. Thanks for having me. It's actually been a real blast being here today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as I like to say, magical. Mm-hmm. Just just ignore sin. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Uh, well, I guess we'll. It's been fun, but I guess we must go. Uh, we'll, we'll give our information. Des, how can people get a hold of you? Uh, you can get a hold of me as per the huge um, on Twitter at des underscore raven, um, where I again rarely live anymore. But of course, you can find me on the Discord, where I kind of primarily lurk. So, yeah. Sense. Solid. You can find me, twitch.tv slash sinmedia. Sin is C-Y-N and over on Twitter at sin underscore media. Kingsley. Take us to Sepix Prime. Yes, you can find me as Kingsley Mac on all the places. I stream on Twitch just occasionally, mostly while I'm writing. Except on Twitter, my tag is actually MC Kingsley. Also, everyone, please continue to check out DestinyNewsHub.com. Remember, we have their articles auto-post into our Destiny News channel. Feel free to click on those links and read the articles because they are pretty amazing. And you can find all of our information about our show, our Discord, and everything either on Twitter at TheGuardianHub.com or on our website, the Guardian Hub. Oh, sorry, Twitter is just the Guardian Hub, and our website is theguardianhub.com. <laughs> the best hub on the net. <laughs> you like that line, Scott? <laughs> I think it was perfect. <laughs> I, had to, I had to hear your reaction because <laughs> we, we always joke like we've teamed up with Destiny News Hub and we're the Guardian Hub. And, uh, you know, there's other hubs on the net, but uh, <laughs> we're. We just happen to yeah, be the best. We just happen to be <laughs> yeah. the best hub on the net. Of no offense to Destiny News Hub. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, well, uh, thanks everyone for tuning in once again this week. Thanks again for uh, coming on our show. And um, we will talk to you all next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Later. Bye.